When you open your eyes, you see the world in front of you. And normally we think that vision is reliable. We can always trust what our eyes show us, right? Well, not all the time. Vision wouldn't be possible without our brain, and our brain, it turns out, uses shortcuts and tricks for vision. And sometimes we can use those tricks to make our eyes see things that aren't really there. For example, right now, on the page, are the lines in gray traveling horizontally, or are they slanted at an angle? Believe it or not, if you get out your ruler, these lines are not angled up and they're not angled down. Visual effects don't have to use shapes, they can also use color. Is this dress black and blue, or is it white and tan? I mean, the question doesn't make any sense. Blue is blue. White is white. Color is not something subjective, is it? It turns out, our brain perceives color based on how much shade there is. If you look at the dress in the middle, and you think it's being shown under a shadow, your brain will automatically lighten the colors, causing you to see white and gold. But if you look at the dress, and you think the picture is being viewed under a lot of excess light, your brain will darken the image, and you'll see blue and black. Here's something that we can actually trust. This is not an optical illusion. This is the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Pisa, Italy. And when you look at this, it's sort of hard to see how big things are. Scale is not always evident. How much higher do you think the left side is than the right side? 3,000 feet? 300 feet? 30 feet? It turns out the left side of this tower is only 3 feet higher than the right side. This tower, by the way, was built over 199 years. That's how long it took to complete. And the reason it's leaning like this is because the foundation on one side uh, was built poorly, and the ground beneath it was not stable. But we can take this picture, and we can again play a trick on our brain. You might have seen photos like this, where people pose, and it sure looks like they're propping up the Leaning Tower of Pisa, or kicking it over. This is one of my favorites, but my very personal favorite is this one. So how can we create this optical illusion? How do we trick our brain here? Well, most of the time, our brain is not tricked by this sort of a thing. After all, if you take your iPhone and you hold it really close to your face, it looks huge. But if you pull it farther away, it looks small. How does your brain know? I mean, the height of your phone, we'll use P for your phone, it hasn't changed. How does your brain figure out how big it should appear? Well, it turns out there is a limit on how high you can see. And this purple line shows the maximum height you can see at any location. So if I dangle a $100 bill right here from the ceiling, you can't see it. It's above your periphery. But if I move it over, then suddenly now you can see that $100 bill. And you can snatch it up. So the reason our phone looks so small all the way over here is because your brain is comparing how tall the phone is to the maximum height you can see. And your brain actually calculates a new value. Your brain compares these two by saying, how big is the phone relative to the maximum height? And that ratio is the relative height. This relative height, that's what you actually see. That's how big things appear. So when you move the phone closer and uh, farther, you're not changing how tall it really is. You're just changing its relative height, how tall it appears. But wait a second. The distance, D, how far away the phone is, is not part of this equation. So how is the distance going to affect the relative height, the height that we perceive? What's the relationship? Is it a direct relation, an inverse relation, something else? Well, to figure that out, 
we're going to have to do some geometry. We have to catch up to what our brain is already doing unconsciously. And we can see clearly that if you take the eye and you put your phone closer, then now the phone will be bigger. Here's the phone's height. Here's the maximum height we can see. And so the, the ratio, when we take that phone height and we divide by the maximum, the phone looks bigger by comparison. The numerator is bigger. So we see a bigger height. And that's because the distance is smaller. So you might already begin to suspect what kind of a relationship this is. Direct or inverse? Eh, something for you to think about. But to prove the true relationship, we're going to need to mark the angle right here. Instead of using an X for the angle, we're going to use the Greek letter theta, which is an O with a line through it. And this is what we do a lot of the time in math and physics. So a question for you, this is something for you to figure out. What does the tangent of theta equal? Think back to Sokotoa. We've got some distances labeled. This is a right triangle, right? You've got your theta here, your angle, and you've got this right angle there. So our brain is doing geometry. We never even knew. Figure out what the tangent of theta is, and then use that equation along with this equation to create a single equation that has both D and H. And only then will we see what the relation is.